Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Doe Doctor Live. Whoops. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of The Doe Doctor. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got a great show for you planned because we are in the dog days of summer. Oh my God, it's hot. I lose two pounds every time I set up the cameras and start working filming in the kitchen. Honest to God. And it's been, hi Leo, hi everybody. Hi, Chef Brandon. Nice to see you, Patty. Uh, it's just great to see everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. All right, let's get started. So, yeah, it's hot. It's hotter than Hades. And uh, I know some of you who would bake no matter what are baking, but many of us have kind of laid off turning on the stove, you know? As we said all summer, as I said all summer, maybe you're grilling outside more, maybe you're looking for no bakes. Anyway, in a few short weeks, it's going to be coming on fall, and we'll be, all of our baking juices are gonna get re and we'll, we'll get going again. So this is just the usual summer, summer slump. Alrighty, but today I'm going to teach you, as I told you last week, I'm going to teach you how to make a semi-fredo. And that, it means half frozen, except actually we do freeze it. And it's basically yummy ice cream, Italian style, without an ice cream maker. So if you have an ice cream maker, you've been using it all summer. But many of us are a little hesitant to get an ice cream maker because ice cream makers take up a lot of real estate in the kitchen or if you have the canister that you need to freeze, well that takes up space in the freezer. So how about a recipe where you don't need any of that and all you need is the most bare bones of equipment that I know you have. All right. But this show is about questions. So first, we're going to handle the questions. Now, there weren't many, but our first question came in via email from Anne. And Anne did write that she won't be in the audience today, but she would really appreciate if we put our baker's mind together and answer her question. So this is a collection, a question for all of us, and I would love to have your ideas and put them in the comments. So Anne has a birthday celebration coming up. She needs to do a fancy dessert that'll serve 10 people. Not, that's not hard, but she doesn't want to use chocolate or coffee. Can you guys put it in the comments for our baker, Anne? A, a nice birthday dessert doesn't have to be a cake with no chocolate and no coffee. Come on, fill up those comments, get your thinking caps on, and start loading up the comments. Birthday dessert, no coffee, no chocolate. You must have one. I know you do. Get it in there. We'll circle back to that. Then another one of our bakers wrote in, and it's all about cupcakes. This question is all about cupcakes. This baker asked, did I have a recipe for a banana pudding cupcake? And I don't. I flat out don't. And if you're gonna make a banana pudding cupcake, oh, wait, wait, let's circle back. Panna cotta from a few glimpses. So we could maybe dress up panna cotta for a birthday dessert. So keep thinking, that's a good one. Keep loading those, ooh, yes, Chef Daniel. Cannoli, Sicilian style. 
All right, Chef Daniel, challenge time. Put in the comments, what makes it Sicilian style? Do we add some candied lemon from those gorgeous Amalfi lemons that they grow there? Or uh, what's going on? Tell us. So we're super informed bakers. What makes a cannoli Sicilian style? All right, load up the comments, Chef Daniel. And I will tell the audience. All right, everyone, whoops, where was I? I lost my train of thought. So banana pudding cupcake. So what we would do for a banana pudding cupcake, and this is what my message to our baker is, we're gonna use components that we already have in our baker's toolbox. We're gonna use like a really nice uh, yellow, could be a yellow butter cupcake, it could be a hot milk sponge cupcake, any kind of a light um, vanilla cake, could be vegan vanilla cake. You could make a vegan banana cupcake, pudding cupcake, but we're gonna focus with old school, not plant-based, regular right now. And then a really yummy pastry cream, like we've made before, with some banana puree, nice ripe bananas, pureed until they're beautifully soft, um, folded in. And then when you do that, you wanna up the vanilla because vanilla is like the best supporting actor or actress in a film. They really, vanilla carries the day. So a little extra vanilla is gonna carry that banana flavor and actually make it more banana-y. How much banana? I hear your questions. Anywhere from 150 to 200 grams of pureed banana. You'd have to taste it um, and see, is it banana-y enough? You could also use, if you like to cook, um, bake with liqueurs, you could add a little creme de banan. And when I make the semifredo, when I demo the semifredo, I'm gonna talk a little bit about working with liqueurs and how you can really get a nice, if you like working with them, how you can get them inexpensively and, in, and, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun trip to BevMo or the liquor store when you're looking for liqueurs. All right, and then on top of all that, so we have our vanilla cake. We have our, we could fill it with essentially banana pudding, and then you're going to top it with a Swiss or Italian meringue, get that piping going, and then maybe, don't forget, to buy a box of Nilla vanilla wafers and either use them as a garnish or even crush them up a little bit and put them in that banana pudding for that real vanilla wafer flavor or make your own. But I will tell you, there are some cookies, there are two cookies that are used in baking, um, can be used in baking, N vanilla wafers made by Nabisco for banana pudding and Nabisco chocolate wafers. I think our baker Randy is in the audience and she tells me she often makes icebox cake um, with chocolate vanilla, uh, chocolate wafer cookies for her husband. And uh, yeah, you can't use anything else. There's no hacking that. It, those two cookies, just buy a box and, and uh, bake away and you'll get that unique vanilla wafer flavor. So there's our banana pudding cupcake right there, bakers. Easy peasy. All right, so we're pretty much done on questions, which is great. So Pepper, uh, more, uh, Chef Daniel, I'm waiting for the why is the cannoli Sicilian style? Type away, let me know so I can tell the audience. Um, uh, okay. I, there's a couple, ah, this demo has a couple of pieces. It's simple, very, very simple, and I'm going to talk you through it so it's like easy peasy, but um, part of it might, it, you'll see, you'll just see, okay? All right, so, all right, first thing we're going to do, and, and this is so accessible and so good, that you will not want to be alone with this semi-fredo. 
so you're going to be like, because you'll keep going back for more. It is just that good. So the first thing you're going to grab is just a normal loaf pan, all right? A normal loaf pan that we're going to line, no greasing, we're going to line with a piece of plastic wrap. And if you've ever lined anything, like a, any kind of a cake pan with a piece of plastic wrap, you'll know that the plastic wrap fights back. So what you want to do to make it easier so it sticks is a little spray of water on the pan before you go to line it with the plastic wrap. And another hot tip for today, this happens to be stretch tight, saran wrap, whatever, any brand, it doesn't matter. When you're working with plastic wrap, keep it attached to the box. Don't cut it until, like, don't, don't work with rogue cut pieces. Here's what I mean. Let me show you. Just going to show you, Baker, so you know. So you give it a spritz, spritz, spritz. Not dripping, just a little spritz. And then you keep it attached. Whoops. Oh my goodness, I lost the end. Typical because we're live. Can't get can't get worked up when you're live. But I love it. No retakes, no drama. It's fabulous. Okay. And see, I keep it attached to the box and it's really not cooperating. That's okay. See here it is. See? and then it goes into the pan. You want a little bit of excess, okay? Then you cut it, and then you mold it to the pan, and with that spritz of water, it's gonna work really, really well. Now audience, here's an update. Chef Daniel has answered our question, and I will tell all of you at the end of demo what he said and why, how to make cannolis Sicilian style, which I know you're all dying to know, for the next time you make cannolis. We should make cannolis on the show, but I'd have to borrow a pasta machine from someone because I don't have one anymore. But that, could, that shouldn't be too hard. See, it lined very, very easily. All right. This is what's exciting about semi-fredo. Semi-fredo is a mixture of a couple techniques. Number one, we're going to whip heavy cream, which we've done a bunch of times on the show, so you totally know how to do that. As a matter of fact, it's done, so I'm not going to torture you with whipping cream. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to make a zabayone. And a zabayone is cooked egg yolks and liquid and sugar. It can be so many things. But for our, this particular Nutella semifredo, it is egg yolks, sugar, milk, and vanilla extract. We're going to cook that over a double boiler. You'll see me do it in a second. And then we're going to add some cho cho chocolate and the Nutella and we're going to get this glorious base for our semi-fredo. All right, so let's do this in real time. And the recipe will be posted on the website, and then I'll have a, I'll have a partial recipe on Instagram on Monday. So four egg yolks, 50 grams of sugar, a good whisk, right here and I have a half a cup of milk. Now oftentimes semi-fredos are made and then they're poured over gorgeous fresh fruit and then brulee, you know, like with a with a torch. So oftentimes there there's uh, wine or there's so many things you can use. You could use coffee. You could definitely use coffee for this semi-fredo. 
I just want to get you, like, I just want to teach you the technique, and then as you know, bakers, you can go crazy. All right, let's recipe recap. Four egg yolks, 50 grams of sugar, half a cup of milk is 113 grams. This is going to go over a double boiler, which has just a small amount of water, about an inch, simmering. Now I'm going to talk to you while I'm cooking this, and I'm going to cook it to 150 degrees so we don't kill anybody, because that would be bad. It kind of thickens up. See, I got the thermometer, and I haven't added the vanilla because I want as much vanilla flavor as possible. It doesn't take long, so stay with it. Keep it moving. And it gets super foamy, foamy, foamy. And then the foam begins to subside, very much like our lemon curd. A thermometer really helps. Now for the semi-fredo, you could add a little liqueur, but we got to be careful because if we get too much alcohol, the semi-fredo won't freeze because alcohol inhibits freezing, which is why you can keep a bottle of vodka in your um, freezer and it's not frozen. But you all knew that because you're grown-ups. All right, let's take a quick check here and see where we're at. There's my whisk. And we, whoops, it's hot. It's really thick and fluffy. Oh yeah, it's fine. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. I have a spoon here. So it's really gorgeous. Look at that. So you could see where if you spooned it over berries, grabbed your brulee torch and torched it, that would be a super sexy dessert right now. Except we should probably add some vanilla. So we're going to add a little vanilla. By the way, if any of you live where there's Kroger markets, their, their private selection brand has a pint of vanilla for $19. That is a great deal. The show is not sponsored by Kroger, not yet, but I wanted to share that with you bakers. If you live by a Kroger-based store, look for it in the baking aisle. All right, and then also I have four ounces of chopped chocolate bakers. Simple, inexpensive chocolate. Do me a favor, chop your chocolate fine. A lot of times, you know I teach for a culinary school, and I will see that my students, you know, everything looks great, but their chocolate is in big pieces. And so I always tell them in their feedback, chop your chocolate finer. And then I think, I gotta tell my bakers to chop their chocolate nice and fine. You know how to do it, stabilize the cutting board, be careful. So that hot zabayone melted my chocolate, and now I'm going to dump in my Nutella. It's 165 grams of Nutella. You could also use, if you wanted like a chocolate peanut butter, um, chocolate peanut butter semi-fredo, you could use peanut butter. Maybe you're stuck on almond butter. You could use that. But Nutella is pretty amazing. So it's, it, it's really good with the Nutella. All right, neighbors. So there we go. We got to turn on our water again. So we're just going to set this aside to cool. And the next step is to make a Swiss meringue. So just rinse your thermometer. Okay, and in the mixer bowl, 
I have two large egg whites and another 50 grams of sugar. And we're going to cook this until it is 100, 150. 150 is the magic number. Now I see a question. Patty is asking, do I have a recommendation for knives for chopping? Patty, would you, do you mean chopping chocolate? Um, uh, let me know and so I can answer properly. Because there's chopping chopping and then there's chopping chocolate. So the KitchenAid bowl is going right over the pot. I have my mitt. And yes, I do need new mitts. Keep it moving. Got the thermometer right here. Hundred and fifty degrees. Well, anything over one forty five, because foodborne illnesses associated with eggs, like salmonella, they die at a hundred and forty four degrees. Those of you who make buttercream all the time, you know exact, you know the drill. Almost there. Now back in the day, you could get away with 120, if I've got any oldsters in the audience. But these days, everybody's so hepped up about eggs, and we've got to be super careful and mindful. And I don't think eggs are the same. I don't know. Um, then we're going to stick this back on the mixer, and we're going to whip it until it's light and fluffy. And I'm going to take questions while it mixes. Okay, so Patty's question, sorry about the mixer, was for chopping chocolate. Alright? I don't know. My I use my old knife. Some chefs recommend a serrated knife, but it uh, that's not my favorite. I like leverage. So I just use an older chef knife, not my good chef knife that I use for chopping, you know, for meals or vegetables or fruit. Just an old knife that you do want to hone or sharpen periodically. But just know that chopping chocolate um, dulls your knife big time. So if you have some gorgeous shun knife, that's not what you want to use for chopping chocolate. It does a number on the blade. Oh, we're done. So we just had one noisy question, so let me recap. I've never seen a chocolatier, and I've been in 10,000 classes and spent at least as much money running around and studying with the best of the best. I've never seen them chop chocolate with a kick-ass knife. There's usually like, like a well-loved older knife that they're working with. Like maybe you have a Hinkle from 1985 in the back of your drawer, hopefully with a knife guard on it. That might be a good one. Just hone it and then use that one for your chocolate. But Patty, no need, to, uh, no need to invest in a chocolate knife. You have one, I'm sure. Full disclosure, I used this old Gerber knife to chop chocolate. This was the first knife as a, a prepubescent, pre-professional chef that I bought. 
and um, the handle is gone. It's really shot, but it works great for chocolate. All right, back to the semi-fredo. Let's regroup bakers. We have our base, which was egg yolks, milk, sugar, uh, cooked until it's nice and thick, it, but it doesn't curdle. We cooked it to, you know, 145, 150, threw in the chocolate, melted the chocolate, then the vanilla, then the um, Nutella, and then, did I say vanilla? Because you know vanilla's in there. Then we cooked uh, egg whites and sugar to 150 degrees. We whipped the heck out of it. And it's just like a mousse, all right? So now the egg whites are going in, and I have another tip for you. If you're folding in ingredients and there's no flour, use a whisk. But use that whisk just like a spatula. That was a pre I could barely get that sentence out. Use the whisk like a spatula. Much better. Okay, so I'm going to add a third of my meringue, and we're going to lighten. But when I use, we're going to lighten the base. I do have a spatula on standby. We're not going to totally abandon the spatula, but this does keep the mixture light. All right. So what we're doing is we want these two textures to be more similar. Okay, just so our semi-fredo isn't heavy. Semi-fredo was so hot in the 80s and 90s, it was on every dessert menu, I feel like. And once you know the technique, you can do so much with it. This is totally bare bones. So the meringue is in. See, bakers? So now the meringue has been added to the base. And I use that J-fold. Spin the bowl. Plop it off. Keep it light. Now we're going to grab our already whipped cream. And if your cream deflates in the fridge, just go at it. That's why I kept the whisk in there. It's 300 grams of cream. I tried to make it work with 227 to make it easier on you guys, but I'm sorry it was just too dense. So you'll have to buy a pint of cream and then maybe figure out what to do with the rest of it. Make yourselves a nice sauce for a lovely piece of grilled fish or chicken. Okay, so now, same thing. We're gonna add about a third, lighten this mixture, and then we're gonna add the rest. I have one already done, because we're all about magic of TV here at the Doe Doctor. Which reminds me, there will be no show next week. I am going to be filming. I'm actually filming for days and days and days after tomorrow. And uh, so, but we will be back on the 27th. And on the 27th, we're going to tackle cream cheese buttercream and how to make it so that it survives in warmer weather. If you bakers remember, that was Tatiana's question at the end of last week's show. So um, I'm on it. That's my job. And uh, we will make that. On the 27th, once again, no class next week because I am happily filming. I will miss you terribly. All right, so that's it, bakers. Really beautiful.
The fun thing for me about filming, and I'm filming for Escoffier, is just putting all the pieces together and uh, seeing it all, seeing it all jump off the screen is very, very cool. So I'm trying to show you, and I'm doing a terrible job because I'm making a mess, and that is not good. But you're just going to load it into the loaf pan. You could use popsicle molds. You could make the most decadent ice cream bars with this mixture. Like, the sky's the limit. But I just wanted to show you that you don't have to get anything special to make a semi-fredo, and that you probably have exactly what you need in your baker's pantry, and then everything we got, I got from the supermarket. So nothing fancy. Here's the one from yesterday. We'll just swap these out. Okay. And because of the plastic wrap, this is very easy to unmold. So I have my little cutting board. There we go. Popped right out. And then we're going to peel off the plastic wrap on a diagonal. Now this is super simple, but before that went into the freezer, you could blanket it with chocolate curls. You could, there's so much you could do. You can do layers of texture, cookies, fruit, whatever you want, but I just wanted to teach you the technique. So now, last thing, I'm going to show you how to cut it. Um, and then that's all you do. Cut it, plate it, garnish it, grab a spoon, and enjoy. Now for this, I'm actually going to use my long serrated knife, and it really helps. Oh, by the way, if the wrinkled surface, it's a little wrinkly, if that kind of bothers you, that's also kind of nice if you, you know, put chocolate curls on it. Remember I taught you how to make the chocolate curls a few weeks ago? Just melt chocolate, take your melon baller, and draw it over the cold chocolate and make just, you know, easy curls. So then you don't have to worry about it. But you could take like a, um, here, let's just do it. You heat up an offset spatula, and you just draw it over the top, dry it, draw it over the top, and that's it. It's beautiful and smooth. So then you're going to heat up your knife in the same way. If you're doing a lot, you're going to have a container of hot water big enough to dip your knife in, or at least part of your knife in. That's what the pros do. And you're going to wipe it dry each and every time. Okay? And then just cut. And the end piece, that's for you in the kitchen because it's never as pretty as the uh, pieces after the end piece. And normally, we want to go about a half inch thick. Your guests have probably been dining, so... Yeah. There it is, Baker's. Beautiful, beautiful semi-fredo. Ice cream without an ice cream maker. You know the technique now, and so you can vary the flavors. If you have ideas, and I know you do, feel free to message me. And uh, if you're like, will this work? Will that work? Shoot me a message and I'll say, yeah, sure, or no, whoop. Maybe try this idea instead. All right, 
we have to, before we close, we have to go back to what makes cannoli Sicilian style. Chef Daniel did answer the question. What makes cannoli Sicilian style is that there is beautiful citron, which is a candied citrus, folded into the ricotta cheese filling, and then uh, the cannoli shells are filled. So, you know, I kind of thought so, because Sicily is known for its beautiful citrus fruit, so it makes total sense. Thank you, Chef Daniel, for answering our questions. We're very great. Our question about Sicilian cannoli. Uh, and maybe in the fall, we'll do an extended Doe Doctor lesson, maybe even a Zoom, one with a Zoom, that could be fun, uh, on how to make cannoli at home. In your own kitchens, that's a nice one for fall. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Doe Doctor. For next week, remember, no show, but we'll be back on the 27th, and we will tackle cream cheese frosting in warm weather for our baker, Tatiana, so she can serve her beautiful cakes with confidence. Thank you guys. Have a lovely, have a lovely day. Oh yes, Nikki, you're right. It could be a bake-along. Take care, everyone. Happy baking. Bye.